Now, y'all already know what time it is. It is time for the mess. So let's get into it, you guys. And what's going on, you guys? This be your boy, Scotty by Nature TV, and we're here for a brand new episode of Yes for the Mess, where we talk about celebrity gossip, hot topics, and all things reality TV based. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful Saturday, and I intend on doing the exact same. What's going on, y'all? Now, special shout out to the Scotty gang, shout out to the brand new subscribers that are probably just now finding me, and shout out to the hate watchers that I know are watching. All right, you guys, now before we get into anything, let's get into what we got coming up today, all right? Now, later on today will be the premiere of the fourth episode of One on One, and this week it will be featuring Ashley Miller, so make sure you guys get in tune with that. We talk about the past, the present, and the future of the Ashley Miller TV brand, all right? Later on tonight, also get into the Love and Mary Transville Live review where i'll go live to discuss what to recap the happenings of tonight's episode of love and mary transville y'all know i go live right after tea and then on monday it is the season premiere of the whether you like it or not panel starring scotty terrence sakina really be and yeah make sure you guys get into that all right so with that being said you guys we are here for the mess so that's what we're here to talk about y'all now um we're here to talk about Saucy Santana and DJ Academics again, but not only these two, Funky Dineva has decided to give his opinion on this situation. Now, the topic came up just today on TGIF with him, Claudia, and Al Reynolds, who really... I, I just don't know why he's here. But yeah, those three had the conversation about it. And I must say that Funky Dineva went completely in on DJ Academics and defending Queen Latifah in the process. So right now we're going to get into what Funky Dineva actually said. And then we're going to come back with my commentary on what he said. So let's get into the audio, you guys. Let's get into it right back. Are y'all here for Saucy? I mean, he defended his friend. Let's go to you first, Funky, because you and Miami. Well, I, said, I, I was going to set this up for Funky. So I just really want everybody to understand the stage that we have here. Now, the City Girls recently released their album, Raw, and it kind of fell flat. They mo only moved like 10,000 units, that's, you know, placed them at 117. And so DJ Academic was talking junk about their career. And Saucy Satana decided that he wanted to inject himself in the conversation. And he called DJ Academic FAG. I don't know if we're allowed to say that on television or not. All right. And he started, he said that, you know, DJ Academic, you always picking on black female rappers, which is very true. Now, DJ Academic called Saucy a cocksucker and said, come on down to the headquarters. Now I'm going to pass it now. I'm going to hand it over to Funky to let y'all really know how we really feel about it. And I'm going to say whatever the hell I want to say. Let me tell you something. DJ Academics is a fat pota Mr. Potato Head, Teddy Ruffin ass, down to the basement, washed up ass, <laughs> faggot, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, he knows good and goddamn well. Saucy Santana called his ass to the carpet. He give women and females all the goddamn smoke. And when Saucy, who a lot will call my sis or girl, got into that ass, then you tried to leverage my sister as a goddamn PR stunt, sitting up there crying, knowing good and goddamn well. Saucy said he'll whoop your ass or rape you in the streets or whatever he said. Knowing good and goddamn well, that'll never happen. But you sitting up in that dusty, quiet as a scab. DJ Academics is the male Kaya, as far as I'm concerned. And believe it or not, we're more willing to accept this shit from Kaya because you know what? She got a problem with her neck and her bike, but you got a problem with your stomach and your your under yeah. here and, and, and probably your money too because you down to the basement beefing with women. And you know what? It, it, it's funny because being a male in this commentary space, I had to learn this. There's a such thing as enough and there's a certain thing as too much. And DJ Academics, you give the girls way too much. We see so many men in hip hop you don't say shit to. Then you want to hop on here and do this fake cry against Santana. How about you talk all that shit to the men? How about you get involved in the Suge Knight, Joe Button, Akon beef and start beefing with the city girls, city grandma? Mm. <laughs> well, hey, I, I so can't argue. Badass. Um, he is. And don't DJ Academics look like he stank in between his legs and in his butt and like his breath smell like oil change? <laughs> Fat bitch. And come from my damn sister in my city girl. 
Not today. Damn reincarnation of Miss Sophia from the color purple. How dare you, bitch? Oh my God. Are you done? Not on my watch. Go ahead, shake uh, it off. general manager for the whole southern region. Yeah. Well, DJ Academics has every right to commentate because that's his job. He's a commentator. But I think he would have more credibility if he if did. He was skinnier. Excuse me? <laughs> if he was skinnier. <laughs> he needed a BBL in his neck. <laughs> in his <laughs> neck. <laughs> and you want to talk out the side of your mouth when you got a whole issue with your neck. Go ahead, Claudia. Um, yeah. Yeah, all of that. Um, academics always does provide a lot of smoke. He actually got, I, I knew of him because of that uh, Selena Powell girl. It's always off the back of a woman, um, which is fine, I suppose. But now that you've had some kind of success and you are, a lot of people do watch your, your YouTube show. Um, it would make you seem less bitchy and cunty if you would sometimes have that same energy for men because it does seem like it's um, disproportionate. He don't do it off his back because it's three times the size of a woman. As Al would say, a woman. He got three times the back, which means he should have three times the space to do it off of his own back. <laughs> DJ Academics, I'm sure you'll have something to say, but as hard as Funky just went at you, I'm sure you'll probably just come for me. Because he's already done that before. Because I'm going to clap that ass harder than Santana. I'm more athletic. No now, shame. what do you think about Santana <laughs> saying he would, like, basically rape him? Not, not a goddamn thing. And, and they're on social media right now trying to make a whole thing about it. And they're like, why when men say it, uh, you know, it comes with so much smoke. And why, when the alphabet community says it, it's not the same outrage. And I'm here to tell y'all, get off my line with this bullshit, okay? Because men are actually running around here raping women, you know, all down to the law and order, all down to the NCIS, Las Vegas, okay? And there are not many social current instances of sissies running around raping men in Central Park. It ain't the same thing. If a sissy say, I'm going to rape you publicly, there's no real threat of saucy Santana raping that big bite, you all shaped duplex shaped bite, shoulder having Vidalia onion in the belly ass DJ academics. There's no real, there's no real fear. Uh, uh, child, please, Santana would have to have the strength of 10 goddamn Olympians to push that big. Overstuffed they, shrimp, baked potato ass nigga down on the ground. They, they similar in size, but speaking of DJ Academics, Queen Latifah shared her thoughts on Academics' emotional video about not wanting to say the wrong thing to Saucy and fears of getting canceled. Queen Latifah wrote, it's crazy to me how DJ Academics is crying, scared to say anything to Saucy Santana because he's a gay man and he's scared of getting canceled. But he had said the, some of the most outlandish, vile, disrespectful, and demeaning things with black women with absolutely no fear whatsoever. Now, Latifah continues by writing Malcolm X's infamous quote, the most disrespected, unprotected, and neglected person in America is the black woman. I'm asking what you think, but I'm going to jump in on this first since I am a black woman. I, I, this is 100% true. Um, and this is a problem that I have that I'm always like, well, what about black women? Well, what about black women? In this case, so I said Santana, I tip my hat to you for defending your friend. I love that because a lot of, of these straight men out here ain't doing that like that. And you went hard for your friend and I appreciate that. And Diddy, I hope you do the same thing because he was disrespecting your girl. That was extremely rude, uh, the stuff that he's saying. But he does that to a lot of women. Look at um, academics. His lips give, he allegedly sucked dick. Oh. That's what he was praying. Oh, he is. We just <laughs> taking a whole show to hell tonight. Cause I don't like what he did. I'm from Miami. I ain't from Florida. I'm from Miami, and I'm back in Carisha and Saucy down to the ground. Uh, TSB Malik said, "Let's be real, Q. That city girl stuff is dead, and both academics and Santana build like silverbacks." <gasps> We're not doing that today. Go on to the go on to the next thing, Claudia. You set me up. <laughs> go on to the Claudia. Go on to the next thing. 
So that was Funky Dineva as well as Claudia Jordan and Al Reynolds, who, like I said, I don't understand why he's there. But that's their commentary on the situation with Funk, with uh, Saucy Santana and DJ Academics. And like I said, this has been a big topic, a big thing to discuss amongst the people. And this is what I got to say. I Like I told y'all, I don't. there's some things that I agree with Funky Dineva on, but then there's a lot of things that I do agree with him on. And on this particular instance, I definitely agree but what he's saying about DJ Academics, it's, it's, it's stuff that I've been saying for the longest period of time. Long as I've been doing commentary on celebrity gossip, which hasn't been that long, rather, I have not liked DJ Academics, okay? I have not because I feel like he's a he's a he's a boy. He's always he always have been a boy. And then on top of that, he always got something to say about the, the female um, artists. You know, some people can say, well, he well, he criticized male artists, too. But see, he does not have the same smoke for males. One thing about me and two things for certain. Y'all can some 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 of these folks because they ain't nothing but, you know, the only people that have really got problems with me is these bitter ass LAMH fans. So I'll be talking about them. You can tell you can say that I got smoke for women. But baby, when people when it's people like DJ Academics and other dudes. Like Tory Lanez and all these other dudes that be going in on women all the time, I do give them that same motherfucking smoke. I give them that same damn smoke, okay? And the smoke that I get these is, is not the same smoke that I ever get even in these females, okay? So, no, me and DJ Academics ain't the same. But I don't care about what was said to him. I don't care about what was disrespectful to him. I don't care about what Saucy Santana said about taking his manhood. You want to know why? And I feel like the only reason why so many people got something to say about it is because they're homophobes anyway. And I don't really use that homophobic word loosely because I don't think that everybody's homophobic. And I don't think that just because somebody disagrees with something gay is homophobic. I don't believe that. But Saucy sent not, no, I mean, DJ Academics was being homophobic in his little rant before he started crying like, like the bitch he is. When he was talking about this Bakhti boy and all this other stuff, he was being passive aggressive with his homophobia then, okay? Like he was being homophobic then. OK, so let's not act like he wasn't. Now, Saucy Santana took it to a whole nother level when he said that he would beat his motherfucking ass and then he'll fuck him in the ass after he beat his motherfucking ass. Now, that's now. Now, he did take it to a whole nother level, but uh, academics was on that homophobic ass shit and Saucy Santana took it to another level. OK, period. That's what he did. Now. Was the notion of I'm a fuck you and your ass after I whoop your mother ass out of line absolutely i agree it is out of line but at this point academics told him to pull up after saucy santana told him to pull up he told him to pull up to his headquarters they at war they're fighting back and forth this isn't the like they're fighting back and forth at this point saucy wants to get academics mad enough to want to whoop his motherfucking ass that is the reason why he's saying this that he's insane you feel what I'm saying? So I, I I wholeheartedly agree that what Saucy said to academics was a bit much. But the reason why I don't give a f about him saying it to him is because are y'all forgetting that this was the same motherfucker that sat in that same basement that smells like feet and Fritos? He sat there and said that he don't give up if a mother is 17 or 18 year old college students. He's still going to get them some. So y'all ain't making no big fuss about him talking about fucking minors and sh but y'all making a big deal about what Sasha Santana saying that is the reason why I don't care about what he said to him because the sh that he said was just as fucking vile when he was talking about fucking minors okay which is statutory so y'all want to be all up in y'all feelings about what the was said to him I ain't saying it's okay that it was said. I'm saying I don't give a f that it was said. I don't give a f that it was said. He said he, he said something about sleeping with minors. So why should I give a f about somebody talking about taking his manhood? I don't give a f He was being homophobic anyway, so he took it to another level. It is what it is. I don't care. And the crazy part about this is you sitting on here and you crying because you cannot hate in peace. That is the thing. You cannot be you cannot be homophobic in peace. You cannot hate the next person for 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 living 
who they for, for sleeping with who they want to sleep with. You crying about that. But I just think that it's effing amazing that you're so worried about getting canceled that you can't you can't you feel like you can't be free to be who you are. Be who you are, academics. Be who you are. Be who you are. Why people talking about it's funny how gays can say whatever they want to say to people, but when somebody when someone says something about them, then they get canceled. No, no, no. I am all for people being who they want to motherfucking be. So if you want to be a homophobic mother, you go ahead and do that. Don't cry about it. Be about it, bitch. If that's what you want to be, be that. I swear to God, I don't give up because I don't like you no way. I don't support you no motherfucking way. So go ahead and be who you want to be. But I think that it's so funny that you crying on camera after a that you feel like it's inferior to you because let's be real. A lot of straight dudes find motherfuckers like Saucy Santana as inferiors. Okay. Because he's effeminate. He acts like a, he acts like a female. He walk around with big ass nails on his hand with a beard looking like Ricky Rose with nails on. They feel like he's inferior. So you done got pumped out by effeminate gay ass. And now you won't hear crying and shit and want the world to feel bad for you. Absolutely not, bitch. I don't feel bad for your ass at all. But see, you talk all that big boy talk, though. But see, you don't you don't sit up here and cry when you're talking about Megan. You don't sit up here and cry when you're talking about Nikki. You don't sit up here and cry when you're talking about Carisha all the motherfucking time. You don't sit up here and cry when you're talking about women. But you want to cry when it step to your motherfucking ass. But that's not it, though. Because the Neighborhood Talk posted a video this morning, all right? And it was a resurfaced video where he was confronted by a Chicago rapper and we saw how he was shaking in his boots. We are about to listen in or watch it, whichever one, and we're going to get right on into it. So let's take a look. How do you feel about that? I, I wanted to slap you in your face, mm. honestly. And Ooh. I'm just seeing you here. So I'm like, this is a tame environment. So I would keep it to my words. But I really felt as if people exactly like you sensationalized and and made a following off of clowning situations that we go through in real life and I, I think you know niggas ain't had no right you know you specifically like you ain't never have a right like whatever made you feel like you had a, a space to have a perspective on our people dying on a daily basis okay, That's a joke so, okay. To you. so when I saw a drill, and, and you could definitely chime in. When I saw a drill, drill was, was so hyped up by everyone. I had to give a different perspective of what that was for people to realize that's not cool. And whether you agreed with it, right? And again, you're very close, you're involved in it. Um, Chief Keith didn't like me, Dirk didn't like me. I mean, I think they grew to understand that the content was not just negative. Right, no, it, was it, was, clowning. it was just negative, man. No, no, no. Like, come on, boy. You, like, you don't I'm, think I'm, it was nothing constructive about it? There was nothing constructive about it. And I'm gonna tell you the truth. I I, I really I really think you're a bitch because in what what's that? Because there's a video that that you put up about a person named Trey 57 making all these jokes. Oh, here's another Chirac Savage, like this guy is stupid and you mess with the Grim Reaper. Like, nigga, this is not a video game. That's a nigga I grew up with, I've known since I was five years old. And to see you come on the internet and like with this corny ass little voice and make jokes about it. Like, you know, I was waiting to see you. And it's a couple people waiting to see you. I heard you say you didn't want to come to Chicago when I sat down, because you clearly don't, because you no, really couldn't even you. stand outside. You get Not chased out wait, the mall. Wait, I do get love in Chicago though. You like, get I mean, I mean, out I mean, the mall, I'm, DJ Academic. I mean, truth be told, there's a mixed reaction. You know, you can't deal with that. You not you wait. Told. So you act like there's no love for me in Chicago. No, and, I, I was trying to know. And you I, need I, to. I wouldn't have put him in that seat. <laughs> <laughs> I would have sat there. No, no, no. I'm 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 of sympathy being felt for this motherfucker right here. Don't nobody give a f about what he talking about or what he dealing with. I don't care about his motherfucking tears. Like I said, you crying because you want to be homophobic in the public. Do that. 
I want you to do that. Give me more reason to do content so I can talk about your ass because I love to drag your motherfucking ass. Do that. Okay? Show your true colors. Be who you are. Which is a fat piece of motherfucking sh And no, I'm not fat shaming. I'm shaming this bitch. Because that's just what he is. He's a punk ass bitch, And I don't with him. Okay? And it's about time that somebody put his bitch ass in his place. He can't deal with, he cannot deal with the real pressure. When people are really giving him pressure, he don't know how to take that shit. He's a bitch. He's a punk. And that's just what it is. You bow down to men, but you got, oh, you worked up when it come down to Megan. You worked up when it came down to Nikki. You worked up when it came down to Carisha. But LL has pressed you. That dude pressed you. Diddy pressed you. Many people pressed you. And you had nothing to say. One thing about it and two things for certain. Joe Budden would never, okay? I feel like Joe Budden does not hold back on shit. He say what he say and he stand on it. You don't. OK, because you a wimp and that's just what it is. But you want to sit up here and talking that Jamaican accent of you, that fake ass Jamaican accent of yours, body boy, body boy, all the other dumb shit you were doing as if that scared anybody. It ain't scaring nobody, mother at all. So stop. You worried about getting canceled? No one cares. I don't really think anybody cares enough to cancel you. At all. I don't think anybody cares enough to cancel you. But all I'm going to say is this. Shut the fuck up. If you can't take the heat, stop bringing it to other folks. And that goes for all of us that do shit like this. If, we, if you cannot take the heat, don't, work, don't get mad when the heat comes to you. Learning it today. Because I talk a lot of shit. But a lot of the time when people be saying, uh, you know, up about me, it does get to me sometimes. I'm human enough to say that. But this mother, but I can stand on what the fuck I've said. This bitch don't stand on what he said at all. Now you want to cry. You want to cry. And then a lot of you, you Nick, that want to stand for him. Because that's what a lot of you motherfuckers do. You stand for bitch, bitch niggas like him anyway. You want to stand for him. And then talking about something. What, what make you think that that's okay for him to say? Well, I don't give a fuck what Sasha Santana said. Okay? I don't care what he said to um, DJ Academics. It's open season on that bitch anyway. So I don't care what he said at the end of the day. So y'all can, you can miss me with it. I don't care. And y'all can, some of y'all can be in the comments and be mad about it. I don't care. I said what the fuck I said. So anyway, with that being said, let's get into some more things, okay? Now, make sure y'all support our very own Tramiel. He's a part of the Chasing panel and he has made guest appearances on Boys Night Out as well. His brand new single, Long Days, is available everywhere. So make sure you guys stream it in purchase. Rapper Bando has a brand new record out called Bando's Dream. And it is now available on Spotify, Apple Music, as well as YouTube. So with that being said, I'm your boy, Scotty by Nature TV. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, share this video, and also click on the notification bell so you can be notified whenever a video drops. And if you want to follow me on any form of social media, my Twitter, my Instagram, and my TikTok will be down below in the description box. With that being said, y'all, your boy's up out of here. And until my next video, I will holler at you guys a little bit later. Ciao.